Good afternoon and welcome to our devotion. This I was going to say this morning, but it's not quite this morning. Uh, it is the afternoon. And uh, yeah, here we go. So who I am in Christ. Today we're dealing with I am hidden with Christ and God. And the verse that we're getting that from is Colossians 3 verse 3, which says this. For you died and your life is now hidden with Christ in God. I want to read a bit about from the devotional itself that uh, Neil T. Anderson has, Who I Am in Christ. And uh, this is what he says here. Colossians 3 verses 1 to 10 contains several statements describing the believer's position in Christ. We are dead, have taken off the old self, have put on the new self, have been raised with Christ, and we are hidden with Christ who is now seated at the right hand of God. Listen to this. All of this is already true because we are in Christ. We cannot do for ourselves what Christ has already done for us. So many Christians are running around. And we need to understand that God's word is an incredible book. God's word contains amazing truths and commandments that we need to obey. There are strong commandments that we need to obey in order to live the life that he wants us to live. But there are also promises that we can claim. And these are one of those promises. These are one of those factual statements. You know, there's nothing we can do to claim this, prom claim this promise or to do make this promise come about, if I can say that. It's already ours. For you died, and your life is now hidden with Christ in God. When you gave your life to Jesus, that was you dying to yourself. I am crucified with Christ. I no longer live. I died at that point. I did my part. The next part is the promise. Your life is now hidden with Christ in God. Your life is hidden. What, what does that mean? What does it mean to have a life that is, is hidden with Christ and God? Well, a good place to go is always the Bible. And, uh, and read up a bit. And uh, what I did is I went into uh, what the Greek means. And uh, that means, strangely enough, to hide. Fancy that. <laughs> to conceal or to lay up. But the interesting part of it is, remember Greek is a very, very precise language. And the interesting part is the verbs and the tenses that it is written in. And this verb specifically is in the perfect, indicative, middle, or passive. And essentially what that means is perfect means it's past, it's happened, it's something that happened. But the middle or passive means that it's something that happens to me. I'm hidden is something that Christ does for me. It's not something I can do for myself. It's something that he does for me. It's a promise that I need to claim that I'm hidden with Christ. And we need to understand that there are benefits to being hidden with Christ. And so here are some of the things of what that means. It means believers have a common spiritual life with the Father and the Son. It means that the world <laughs> cannot understand the believer's new life. It means believers are eternally secure, protected from all spiritual enemies, and with access to all God's blessings. And I want to read a scripture from John 10 verse 28. It says this, I give them eternal life, and they will never perish, and no one will snatch them out of my hand. This kind of goes back to what we were talking about on Friday, about your assurance of salvation. When you died and you gave your life to Jesus, He hid you. He concealed you. He did it. He took you. You are His. Your eternity is secure. There is nothing you can do that will make your eternity more secure than what it is. You are hidden with Christ. And I, I kind of I get this picture of this this um mother hen, you know, of this hawk that flies overhead and she opens up her wings and these little chicks run under and the mother hides hides the 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 chicks from the hawk. And that's the kind of picture I get is that we are hidden in Christ. 
we're with Christ in God. He looks after us. He protects us. It's not something that we can do in our own strength. What is the lie that the enemy brings to us? And this is a lie that we often buy hook, line and sinker. We just take it in. You can never make the cut. It's part of the lie. You're not good enough. Look how much better those Christians are than what you are. Look at the sin that you're dealing with in your life and your thought life and, and what you're going through at the moment. And those are the lies that the enemy bombards us with because the enemy wants us to feel that we are insecure. He wants us to live our life like this. You know, he can do nothing about who we are in Christ. You need to understand that very clearly today. The devil can do nothing about who you are in Christ. Because that is something that Christ gives. And something that he holds you to. And he holds on to you. But if he can get you to think that you are not secure in your relationship with Christ. That determines how you act. And you're going to live a very wobbly, insecure Christian life. Constantly wondering whether you are born again. Have you made the cut? Do you still need to do more? Have you done enough of this? Have you maybe repented of sin? Uh, you know, Is there a hidden sin that maybe you haven't repented of that's going to keep you from, from hell? And, and all of these things. And this is what the devil does. You need to remember you're hidden in Christ. He has done it. Here's the truth that you need to take home. Don't listen to the lie of the enemy. As soon as that lie comes, you take it captive and you throw it away. Just like that. The thought comes into your mind, grab it, blow it away. I don't accept this thought. Here's the truth. Jesus chose you, my friend. He has hidden you. You are his. He has you. The lie of the enemy will come to uh, give you a wobble. He will come to make you feel insecure. But you need to claim the truth of God that you are hidden with him. You've died. If you have genuinely given your life to Jesus Christ. And, you know, I'm busy reading a an autobiography by Billy Graham at the moment. And something that sticks out to me is just the simplicity of the message that Billy had throughout this whole time. He didn't make it complicated. So here's the simplicity of the message. You and I have sinned. We are separated from God because of that sin. Jesus came down to pay for the penalty of that sin. All we need to do is accept what he's done. Repent of that sin. And he'll forgive us. That's it. And we make it so complicated. And if you've done that in your life, then you can rest secure that right now, Colossians 3 verse 3 is yours. You died. And you gave your life to Jesus. And your life is now hidden with Christ in God. And you're secure. And he has you. And there is no enemy or demon in hell that can touch you. Because you're his. Let's pray. Lord, I want to thank you for the truth of your word. And Lord, I know that the enemy is so good at lying to us. And he's so good at deceiving us and, and, and playing on our emotions. And Lord, sometimes we, we get sucked into that. And I just pray, Lord Jesus, that you would help us to remember your word is truth. And Lord, your word is sharper than any two-edged sword. And the devil hates that sword. He hates it because he knows it's true and he knows he's defenseless against it. And he will try everything he can to keep us from living victoriously. And Lord, I thank you. Right. I thank you for all of these devotions, Lord. I thank you for this. These statements that we have that uh, Dr. Neil T. Anderson has put together. Lord, I thank you for the ministry you've blessed them with. And I pray that you'd help us to stand firm in believing these truths. That Lord, that when the enemy comes, we believe the truth. And not the lie. In Jesus name. Amen. I trust you have a wonderful rest of your day. God bless.